welcome to lecture 57 in last lecture we were discussing about the design of transonic compressor which was having say expected pressure ratio of 1.63 we were having constraints with tip diameter up to tip ratio at the entry is given to us speed it was limited by 16100 and we started doing design with initial consideration of assuming certain parameters and finally we have come up with the solution say our axial velocity to be 225 meter per second our peripheral speed to be 400 meter per second tip diameter that's what was coming 0.516 that's what is less than what we are supposed to be and that's the reason why we have accepted with rotational speed it was coming 14805 and tip mark number which was constrained saying 1.4 in spite of that for our assumed values of axial velocity and peripheral speed that's what was coming 1.35 and that's what we have accepted with then we were discussing about the flow track configurations so if you recall this is what were we were discussing in last lecture where we have configured our say flow track for axial flow compressor first that's what is with say constant tip diameter configuration in that our tip diameter that's what will be remains constant and as we know our expected pressure ratio that's what is in higher range 1.63 that's what is higher in that range that means we will be having our exit configuration or exit dimensions to be different because we are planning to have satisfaction of continuity equation if we consider our pressure ratio to be higher that means that's what will be giving our density also to be higher and in order to maintain our axial velocity to be constant our exit area that's what was decreasing and if we configure our requirement as a constant tip diameter then my half diameter that's what will be changing compared to my entry condition and my exit condition there is second configuration that is also possible in which we will be maintaining our hub diameter to be constant now when we say our hub diameter to be constant in order to satisfy the continuity equation we will be having our flow passage flow track that's what will be looking like this in which my tip diameter that's what will be going to be decreased towards the exit of my stage there is one more possibility in which we will be assuming some radius ratio or maybe we will be configuring saying like maybe constant mean diameter kind of configuration then we will be having our passage to be converging passage like this now today we will be discussing in detail design using say constant half diameter configuration so in order to move with constant half diameter configuration very first thing that's what we need to find that is with the diameter ratio so what we know we have our continuity equation based on my mass to rate equation that's what we can write down saying like density into area into say axial velocity this is what we are configuring at the exit that's the reason why this is what is say rho 3 pi this is what is my half diameter and this is what is my ratio and into say axial velocity now as we have discussed we have done our calculation for half diameter and tip diameter earlier for this configuration we are assuming our half diameter to be constant that means my r1 h and r3 h this is what will be remaining constant and that's what is say 0 0.0967 meter now once we know this half diameter based on my continuity equation we can calculate what will be my say ratio of hub to tip and that's what is coming 0.4363 now here in this case once we understand the dimensions for hub diameter based on this ratio we can calculate what will be my tip diameter and that's what is giving me my tip diameter to be 0.22 meter so if we draw our passage we can say 
this is what is my half diameter and this is what is my tip diameter okay now once we have done this calculation for hub and tip diameter we are looking for say what will be the dimensions at the mid station because at mid station if we configure at station 2 my r2h that's what will be say constant and my r2t that means my tip dimension at station 2 that's what we will be taking as an average value and this is what is coming as a 0.24 meter now we can say we are having all the dimensions at entry at mid station and at the exit now if this is what is known to us what we know is we are planning to do our calculation since this is what is high pressure ratio configuration and we know this is what is a transonic compressor that means we need to do calculation for our mid station and as we have discussed when we will be having say subsonic compressor we are considering our mid station at 50 percent of span and when we are configuring or when we are considering our compressor as transonic compressor all calculation that's what we are doing at 75 percent of span so we can say this is what is our mid station so at the entry we need to have value of radius at mid station also we are looking for radius and at the exit also we are looking for radius because that's what will be giving me the streamlined pattern at 75 percent span okay so if we configure in that direction then we can say my mean radius at the entry that's what is given by r1h plus 0.75 this is what is my tip radius minus hub radius we can say this is coming say 0.217 meter same way at mid station also at location 2 we can calculate that's what is coming 0.204 meter and at the exit that's what is coming 0.191 meter now this is what is must in sense of doing our calculation we need to be very careful in considering and calculating this mean radius okay so it is advisable based on what dimensions we are getting for hub and tip just draw a diagram and based on that you just try to calculate this radius okay now this is what we can say in sense of uh, the configuration what we have decided with with our axial velocity of 225 meter per second and our peripheral speed that's what we are writing as a 2 pi r n by 60 here our rotational speed we have considered as 14805 rpm so this is what will be giving me dimensions at different stations and we need to be very careful here at hub at mid station and at the tip station at still location one we will be having u that's what will be different same way for mid station also we will be having these dimensions to be different and this is what is my station 3 basically that's what is the exit of stator so that's what where we are not considering any peripheral speed configuration so we need to be very careful in sense of doing our calculation for peripheral speeds let's try to look at what all are the changes suppose if we consider this is what is with our constant tip diameter for which we have done our calculation we have done our design and this are the station 1, 2 and 3 for constant hub diameter. Let's try to compare what exactly will be the change. Because this change that's what will be reflecting in our design. So if we configure this is what is my mean station calculation. It says my entry mean station that's what is 0.216. At mid station it is 0.226 and say at at the exit we will be having 0.234 so we can say this is what is giving upward direction kind of configuration for the streamlines here these are the dimensions at hub tip at mean station suppose say if we are comparing these two numbers we can see here at mid station we are having radius that's what is same at say mid station we are having that's what is a 0.204 you can compare this value it is 0 
for constant tip and for say constant hub configuration it is 0 0.204 at the exit also my mean radius that is what is decreasing. So, we can say our streamlined direction or if we draw the line that is what is connecting all this point that is what is showing say the flow to be moving towards the hub direction. So, that is what is the imaginary line but we can realize we can understand that part. Now, what is happening if we are configuring here we can say my radius at the hub at the exit that is what is lower. At mid station that is what is also we are having lower value and at say our tip station there also we are having this value coming to be lower. Now this is what all numbers we are looking at that is what is basically reflecting on our peripheral speed and we know our peripheral speed that is what is a function of my radius. If we are having the change in this peripheral speed accordingly we will be having change in flow velocity components. We also will be having change in flow angles and if we are having this configuration that is what is different we can say what all say observation parameters like diffusion factor, degree of reaction, de Hollers factor, my deflection angle, my different flow angles those all that is what will be getting changed or that is what will be having different values. There is a purpose specifically in one lecture that is what is dedicated for this particular design because that is what will be giving us the feeling of suppose say if you will be configuring this kind of design ok. So, let us move it what all we are discussing. Now, here in this case once we know what is our entry station that is what we will be dividing into say 9 station. So, if we configure my radius at the hub that is what is 0 0.097 and this is what is at the tip that is what is say 0.258. Be careful we are always looking for R1, we are looking for R2 and we are looking for R3. If you recall this is what is we are looking for the calculation of U. So, make a habit of writing this R1 and R2 separately even R3 also separately when you are doing your design for stator. Otherwise, there are chances that you will be making mistake which radius to be selected that is what is always very important. So, this is what is at say 75 percent span that is what is coming 0.217. Now, here this is what is our design requirement. So, we will be initiating our design at the mid station. Now, if you recall when we were discussing constant tip diameter configuration, we have initially assumed our total pressure say delta P0 or say pressure ratio at the mid station that is what we have initially assumed. And then after in later case if you recall we have changed our loading in order to set the loading both towards the tip as well as towards the hub region in order to receive expected pressure rise. So, here also we can move it say assuming our pressure ratio to be 1.63 and later on we can modify the total pressure ratio or expected pressure ratio as per the design. But in order to reduce the iteration we are not doing like that. Let us assume our delta P0 at the mid station to be on the higher side. From initial only we will be taking this as a 70,150 Pascal. Now, this is what we are assuming at say delta P0 at the mid station. Now, once this delta P0 that is what is known to us we can calculate what will be our temperature rise total temperature rise at the mid station and this is what we are writing in terms of say polytropic efficiency my entry temperature and delta P0 and total pressure at the entry and that is what is coming say 52 Kelvin. Now, basically this delta P0 that is what is very important because in order to do the calculation at mid station we are looking for velocity components we are looking for flow angles. So, what we will be doing we will be assuming our aerodynamic work and thermodynamic work that is what is to be same or we can say here 
we are writing cp delta t0 that's what is say, say lambda into omega here we need to be very careful say this radius say when we were doing our design for subsonic compressor that's that time we were writing that as a u2 cw2 minus u1 cw1 but here in this case say there u1 and u2 that's what our radius that's what was coming to be say same and that's the reason why we are putting u2 cw2 minus u1 cw1 but here in this case our radius that's what is different and that's the reason why we are writing as a r into omega minus r into omega at the entry station and we will be putting this is what is say lambda into omega r cw2 minus r cw1 be careful about when we are doing our calculation for say supersonic or say transonic compressor okay we are assuming our entry condition to be axial and that's the reason why wall component we are assuming to be 0 meter per second and that's what will be giving me my whirl velocity at the exit of my rotor and that's what is coming 168.38 meter per second. Now this is what we realize now alpha 1 that's what is known to us my peripheral speed is known to me axial velocity is also known to us for that we can do our calculation for say angles beta 1 beta 2 we can calculate what will be our absolute velocity at the entry what will be our absolute velocity at the exit my relative velocity at the entry and relative velocity at the exit so this we are writing in sense if you configure this is what is say my entry velocity triangle since this is what is my axial entry so alpha 1 that's what is equal to 0 so from trigonometry we can say 10 beta that's what is given by u by ca and that's what is coming 56.26 degree now same way at the exit we can write down say 10 beta that's what is u minus cw2 divided by this is what is my ca and that's what is giving my beta 2 at the mid station at the exit of rotor as 33.77 degree now once we are calculating our beta 1 and beta 2 we can calculate what will be our delta beta and that's what is coming 22.9 degree okay same way we can do our calculation for alpha at the exit so alpha 2 at the exit that's what is given by cw2 by ua these numbers are known to us we can calculate our alpha 2 that's what is coming 36.81 degree now what we are looking for is observation for our degree of reaction at the mid station and as we have discussed this degree of reaction that's what we are calculating as a 1 minus cw2 plus cw1 divided by 2u here in order to avoid the confusion we will be taking say mean or we can say average peripheral speed and that's what is said 326.72 meter per second that's what is giving degree of reaction as a 0.74 now next component that's what is of our interest that's what is our relative velocity at the entry and relative velocity at the exit of the rotor so from trigonometry if we will be taking say cosine say cos of beta 1 that's what is say ca by relative velocity component v1 that's what is given say v1 as say 405.12 meter per second now same way we can do our calculation for relative velocity at the exit and that's what is coming as a 269.4 you can say here we are having effective kind of diffusion that's what is happening my relative velocity at the entry is higher my relative velocity at the exit that's what is coming to be lower and that's what we are calculating as a de Hollers factor and that's what is coming say 0.66 okay now next important parameter for us that's what will be to decide with the number of blades and what will be the chord of my blade so as we have discussed our aspect ratio 
in earlier design that's what was coming say 1.6 so in order to compare these two designs in that sense we will not be changing this aspect ratio let's take same aspect ratio here for constant tip diameter configuration so aspect ratio i am taking as a 1.6 now in order to calculate the height of my blade or the span of my blade that's what we are doing as a h1 plus h2 by 2 so h1 and h2 that's what is given by r1 minus rh at entry and r r r t minus rh at the exit and this is what is coming to be 0.167 meter based on that we will be calculating our chord and that's what is coming as a 0.105 meter now if we compare this number with our earlier calculation with say constant tip diameter configuration this chord was coming 0 0.09 meter so you can say here our chord that's what is coming to be larger okay so the changes that's what will start reflecting now same way in earlier design we have assumed our number of blades for the rotor as say 29 so we will not be changing those number of blades okay so number of blades that's what we have assumed to be 29 same we will be putting here that's what will be giving us the pitch to be 0 0.046 meter now based on pitch and chord we can calculate our solidity and that's what is coming as a 2.31 once we know what is our solidity my immediate parameter that need to be calculated that's what is say my diffusion factor so the diffusion factor of this rotor that's what we can calculate based on beta 1 beta 2 and based on my what is the solidity so if you are writing this this is what is coming as a 0.44 now in order to calculate my blade parameters very first parameter which we need to calculate is a slope factor or say Carter's parameter and that's what we are writing here we are considering our say Campbell line that's what is a circular arc Campbell line and that's the reason my a by c that's what we are taking as a 0.5 and my parameter or m factor that's what is coming as a 0.343 now once we know what is our parameter m we can calculate our camber angle that's what is delta beta minus incidence and in the as a function of say my m parameter and solidity so if we are doing this calculation my camber angle at the mid station that's what is coming 29.57 degree same way we can use our carter's relation for calculation of deviation angle and that's what is coming as a 6.69 similar to what all we have discussed earlier for almost all design based on your computational study or based on your past experience you can do the correction for your deviation angle same procedure we will be following here also and we can do our camber, camber angle collect correction and we can do our calculation for say stagger angle collection so these are the angles what we are getting in sense of 32.07 that's what is my corrected camber angle and 40.21 that's what is my corrected stagger angle now in overall if we look at this is what is my station so if we configure here as i was saying we need to be very careful in sense of my radius so this is what is my radius r1 and this is what is my radius r2 this is what is my radius r3 because that's what will be giving me u1 and u2 to be different okay so based on that this is what is a table that's what we have prepared assuming our delta p0 that to be here okay now once this is what is we have done at the mid station next step for us it is to calculate at hub station as well as at the tip station so in order to do calculation at the hub station we are following the approach that's what is say our fundamental design approach 
we need to assume delta P0 near the hub station. And we know hub is critical in sense of the having flow turning angle to be large and it may be possible that my degree of reaction may be going lower in that region. So, it may possible like we have discussed earlier also some of the portion near the hub region for this compressor may act like a turbine if we will not be configuring or if we are not designing properly and that is what will lead to losses maybe in sense of rise of pressure or maybe in sense of say my operating range and that is the reason why we need to select this number iteratively. Okay. And in order to have that flexibility, we are having now our Excel sheet program with which we can do the modification what we are looking for. Say so for design, here in this case we have assumed near the hub region going aggressively, we have taken this pressure ratio expected near the hub to be 1.5 and that is what is giving me my pressure rise near the hub to be 50,471 Pascal. Now, once we have assumed this delta P0, we can do our calculation for delta T0 at the hub station and that is what is coming 39.23 Kelvin. Now, if we compare our aerodynamic work and thermodynamic work, we will be getting our work component. Be careful here also what we are discussing in sense of my you know R2 into CW2. Be careful about this design calculation. Do not make any mistake here. That is what is giving me my world component at the hub to be 268.32 meter per second. Now, once we know what is our axial velocity, our peripheral speed, one of the world component based on our velocity triangle at the hub station, this is what is at the hub station. Okay. If we are putting this, that is what will be giving me my 10 beta 1 as say u by C a. If you are putting these numbers, that is what will be giving me my beta 1 to be 33.68 degree. Same way we can do our calculation at the exit of the rotor and that is what is coming minus 27.75 degree. Now, here in this case, my delta beta as we were discussing near the hub, that is what is coming to be large. This is what is a 61.43 degree. Okay. Now, we can do our calculation for what will be the alpha 2 at the hub station and that is what is coming 50.02 degree. Now, in order to calculate our degree of reaction, we can do the calculation for degree of reaction and if you look at my degree of reaction at the hub, that is what is coming 0.1. So, we need to be very careful and that is what is the flexibility we are getting when you are using Excel sheet program. If you are doing pan paper calculation, it requires a number of iteration and it may possible you will come up with some wrong solution. So, it is advisable you use your Excel sheet program and based on that you modify your delta P0, keep on I for your degree of reaction, keep on I for your delta beta, keep on your I for say your deviation angle, keep on I for your camber angle. Be careful, this is what is very important because there are more chances to come with say some problem near the hub region. Okay? And that too, this is what is we are configuring constant hub diameter. Okay. Now, once we have done this calculation, we can have our relative velocity components at the hub station. So, here if you calculate V1, that is what is coming 270.37 meter per second. Same way, my V2 at the exit, that is what is coming 254.25 meter per second. And if we look at my degree or say de Hollers factor, that is what is coming 0.94. Okay, so, this is what is also indicating like we are having diffusion that is what is happening near the hub region, but you can compare these velocity components that is what is showing like my diffusion that is what is not happening as per our expectation in that sense. Okay. Now, here for say number of blades 
as we have assumed that's what will be remaining same so we will be taking say number of blades to be 29 we can do our calculation for pitch this also many times we are committing mistake we are considering pitch to be same but we must realize my pitch it is a function of radius okay so we can do our calculation for solidity and that's what is coming 5.012 okay now here in this case let me put a comment say all designs what all we are discuss or we will be discussing where we are configuring say our core to be constant from hub to tip but in order to manage the flow particularly say when we say near the hub region many times designers they are prefer to change the cord length if you are changing our cord length accordingly we will be having change in our camber angle so there are many iterations people they are doing in order to manage the flow properly near the hub region so they will be having variation of cord from say hub to tip for many industrial designs maybe industrial compressor as well as for industrial fans this kind of configuration you can see now at the same time suppose if we consider say we are having say exhaust fans for those exhaust fans many times for design they are taking say cord at the tip region to be large so those all are different design philosophies and as I told like with what all numbers you are playing with and ultimately what all you will be getting in sense of your final shape of the blade just go with your computational tool and try to achieve the expected performance maybe at a design point maybe at off design point just verify with that part and if that's what is coming as per your expectation that's what will be your design okay there are certain rules which we need to keep on eye but at the same time superficially there is no such fixed design rule for say compressor as well as for fans okay now here we will be doing our calculation for the diffusion factor and as we know our solidity we can say diffusion factor at the hub that's what is coming 0.16 so here this is what is the discussion about design method using constant hub diameter and we have done our calculation for say the radius at hub mid and tip station at the exit of the stage and at the mid of the stage then we have started doing calculation for say mid station we have shown the calculation at the hub station we will see how the calculation that's what will be proceed further for the tip station and based on that we will be coming up with the final design seat that's what we will be discussing in the next lecture thank you very much for your kind attention we will be discussing further comparison we will be discussing about design calculation and the comparison of both the methods in next lecture. Thank you. Thank you very much.